Hey everybody, I'm Sean and this is Frank. This is Frank. Um, way back in April when I was getting ready for a Walker Stalker Con Chicago 2019, in case you happen to be watching this in the future, um, I was uh, painting some of my plaster pieces, uh, the, the wall hangings, the vampire and the demon sculpt uh, pieces, and I thought I'll shoot a process video just to show my process for painting them in case anybody's interested. Um, now, I in no way invented this style of painting. Um, I'm sure other people do the same thing, maybe probably even better. But um, this was something I discovered just by dicking around and, and trial and error, and it's, I found something that seems to work for me. So, um, you know, if you're interested, take a look at the video. I try not to make it too long. Um, if you're not interested, feel free to move on. Um, so anyway, without further ado, let's go. Come on, turn your head. Just like we rehearsed. Damn it. So here I am, um, just a couple of days before Walker Stalker. I'm sitting here doing some painting, um, painting up a couple of the, the bigger plaster pieces. Um, you got the, the vampire skull here, and you got the parts of the demon skull here. And what I'll do is I'll take these and I'll eventually put that there and I um, drill a hole in there and I put a dowel rod and then I, I glue it and I'll let the glue but as you can see I'm trying to get the, um, the paint into the little lower areas of the sculpture the little grooves the nooks and crannies and um, I'm about ready to do that with with this piece and then ultimately they'll end up looking more like this kind of like an antique stone so basically what I've done with these um, I spray them with primer and then I spray them with a, um, a clear coat I put a pretty generous helping on there and the purpose of that is it helps the, the paint slide off of there when I paint it and then I wipe it off. It helps it to slide off a little bit easier. I'll demonstrate the uh, process here. Just use regular old black, black paint and uh, a brush. All my brushes are falling apart <laughs> and warped <laughs> because I beat the hell out of them. So take just a little bit of water. You don't want too much, but it helps the paint to slide around. And I just start, I start putting it in there, and the eyes. I'm pretty sloppy about it. I mean, I'm not real meticulous. If I had to sit there and paint every one of these pieces with a little bitty brush trying to get into those grooves, I'd go insane. So what I do is I basically I just I do a little of that. I take a rag, any any rag will work, whatever whatever you have, and just start wiping it off and then you have I also use my finger because sometimes it comes off better with my finger and now you've got everything kind of staying in there sometimes a little stubborn some areas I didn't get quite as much crystal clear the crystal clear like I said just helps it to slide off there a little easier do a couple more do the area here because I have a little bunch of little grooves on the horn, the, the base of the horn. Just kind of get it in those grooves so you can see the little cracks and detail. Let's see. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect to I me mean, because I'm going to do something else with it later anyway. with your finger kind of if, it, if you feel like it's a little too dark it helps just to get it off I use my fingers quite a bit for a lot of this <laughs> and then get in their nose uh, that'll clear out your sinuses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's a little groove there and then I'll just take that and you want to brush it 
pretty, or, or not brush it, you want to wipe it off pretty frequently because it will dry. I mean, I suppose if it dries completely, you could probably still wipe a fair amount of it off with your fingers, but it's always good to do it while it's still wet. It's just easier. Save yourself a headache later. So here are the, the horns. They kind of do the same way as you saw before. They were red. I spritzed them red with some paint enamel. And then I just did the same thing, the, uh, the black wash on them. And they will eventually go on here. And as you can see, they, the paint ended up a little darker. And on this one over here, it's a little lighter. They all, they all turn out a little different. <laughs> but um, this, this particular horn, uh, I sculpted, I, u I used, um, I referenced a, um, a horn, um, I referenced a, a set of horns I found in a Halloween costume uh, package uh, from a, like a Halloween store. And I, uh, I liked the look of the horns, so I, I did a sculpture of that. And I did one because it took me a while to get this to look the way I wanted it. It was not easy. And I thought, I'm never gonna be able to sculpt another one like this. So I'm just going to mold this and uh, cast two of them and then make two molds. So that's kind of how that happened. Uh, yeah, it, this was, this took a little bit of time to do. Yeah, let me bring um, this right here. This was the old demon skull I did. Oh, I'm about 20 years ago now. When I first started doing this kind of thing and I did a convention in Pittsburgh, which this year is the 20th anniversary of that. I did that three years in a row when I was first started doing conventions and kind of got away from it for a long time. But I wanted to redo it and um, give it, make it a little more elaborate, give it a little more character. I mean, this, is, this sculpture is decent, it's not bad. The mistake I made is you have the horns that point upward and the teeth that point downward. You put that in a mold and that's it's hard to, to get it out of the mold so that's why with the new one i have the um horns separate from the rest of it makes it a little bit easier to take it out of the mold all right so now we're in my poorly lit garage <laughs> um i've got the three pieces i was working on on my table my table i've got a few other Projects going right now. I've got some Freddies at the bottom, at the, at the end there, and uh, and so what I do with these is I take some. Usually, I just take some white with the primer in it. it. Doesn't necessarily have to be with the primer in it, but that's what I usually get. Um, and I just kind of lightly spritz it. And all right, so I just take this and I just kind of. See that it starts to mute the black colors a little bit more. I don't know if you could tell, it's kind of hard to tell on the camera, but and it gives it a bit of a antique stone look, which is what I like. Now, I'm not sure how I came up with this system. I think I discovered it by accident, I'm sure. I did not invent it. I don't claim to, but I discovered it somehow by mistake, and that's kind of how I do it now. It gives it, like I say, this kind of antique stone look, which I really like. And it just mutes, because you can see the black is really harsh right now. And then when you spray it, it just mutes it and makes it look a little, you know, I don't know any other way to describe it. You know, a little more antique or vintage stone or whatever. I don't know, but I like it. All right, uh, now I'm about ready to put the horns in and you can see what I've done here is I've drilled a hole and put a little dowel rod in there. Just, it's really just to keep it in a place because just trying to glue it in there, it's on an incline and it, it ends up 
falling out and it's it's a real pain in the ass. But uh, what I do is I'll maybe put a little paint dot there, put the horn in there so I could see where it is and where the hole will line up. It's not a perfect science, but it kind of works. Yeah, there, that should be fairly secure. Let that sit overnight. And then when the paint is dry on the other one, I'll do the same thing. I'll just preset the dowel rods on those two in the back there and we'll be good to go.